Ateneo de Naga University, the only autonomous and institutionally accredited university in Bicol, introduces the Ateneo Normal. What is the Ateneo Normal? It is a carefully thought of curriculum that has networked, engaged, optimized approach on learning. Networked through the use of Google Classroom, Moodle, Scholastic Prime Reading, and other online programs for flexible learning. Through discounted computer packages to be offered through the Ateneo system, as well as the support we are getting from the other Ateneos in the Philippines. Engaged. Equipped and poised to give the highest quality of education. We have PAASCO accredited programs and PAASCO institutional accreditation. Not to mention, we are the only autonomous university in Bicol which has centers of development and excellence. And we have industry practicing faculty recognized as experts in flexible learning and in various disciplines by CHED and DepEd. Optimized for the total development of each student in the tradition of cura personalis or care for the individual person. We for men and women for others through the promotion of faith and service in the Catholic and Jesuit tradition. Our top-notch guidance programs and expert guidance counselors are ready to assist online. In these trying times, Ateneo Normal will shift from the traditional method to flexible. It consists of online classes, face-to-face -face classes with reduced class size of 20 to 25 students, flip classroom, so, what is flipped classroom? Lecture materials, e-resources, or worksheets are given to students for them to access it on their own pace. Students can study at their own pace, whether to move faster, pause, rewatch, and look for other resource materials. They can even review at their most convenient time and take breaks when needed. It is more student-focused giving the student the time to learn lessons at his or her own pace. With all this information, I am sure you are excited to try out this flexible learning method. What are you waiting for? Let your new normal be at the new normal. Join us! Ateneo de Naga University, 80 years of education excellence and moving on to new frontiers. Hi there! Welcome to Ateneo Normal. Ateneo de Naga University's flexible learning system. How flexible? You can access it from the comforts of your home, your favorite place to chill, and literally anywhere. Through the use of Google Classroom, Moodle, Scholastic Prime Reading, and other online programs for flexible learning, teachers and students can actively discuss, conduct exercises, and have their grades assessed. It's like you never left.
no laptop, poor internet, no worries. Ateneo Normal offers learning packs for pickup and drop off. Easy, right? Network. Engaged. Optimized. Join us. Enrollment begins on June 22 and As a start on August 3. No entrance exam, no tuition fee increase. In this new normal, Ateneo is moving forward to new frontiers. Ateneo de Naga University, 80 years of excellence and paving the way to new frontiers. Good afternoon to all our viewers, students, and parents. Welcome to the Ateneo de Naga University info session with the college administrators, understanding the Ateneo normal. I am Ms. Bernie Aton Polikit, Director for Communications and External Relations, your host. This afternoon, we will have a discussion on the guidelines and strategies of flexible learning in higher education a walkthrough of Google, Google Classroom, and a sharing of the partnerships of ADNU with different companies so that our students will have options for affordable gadgets and internet plans to be used for online learning. We will also entertain questions for our viewers, and our administrators are with us to respond. You may send your questions through the comment section while the discussions are ongoing. Before we start the session, Dean Delia Oko of the College of Nursing will lead us for the opening prayer. As one, we utter in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Loving Heavenly Father, we come to you this moment asking for your blessing and help as we are gathered together. We thank you for the gift of technology that help us adopt and thrive in this new normal. We pray for guidance in the matters of, at hand and ask that you would come with us, inspire us with the spirit of joy and enthusiasm. As you are unceasingly heeding our petitions to end this COVID-19 pandemic, let your gentle heart and hands bestow on us the desire to clarify matters, which is fundamentally for the benefit of our future generation. Anoint our ideas so that even the smallest details of our conversation will be for your greater glory. We ask you this through the intercession of St. Ignatius of Loyola and Our Lady of Peña Francia. Amen. All glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good afternoon. Thank you, Mom Team. Again, warm welcome to everyone. Since this is an afternoon full of discussions and interaction with our viewers, we will immediately start with the first discussion. In order, in order for us to know how the flexible learning will be implemented for the higher education unit and explain the guidelines and strategies for this coming semester, let us welcome Dr. Alfredo Fabai, the Vice President for Higher Education. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon.
It is my pleasure to welcome you to the webinar on Flexible Learning in Higher Education of Ateneo de Naga University. It is our hope that this session will be productive and will lead you to make informed decisions regarding the enrollment and continued education of your students and wards. So my focus is on the interim academic policies and guidelines for flexible learning, which we have adopted for this coming school year. Let me first start with a background. In 2013, outcomes-based education was adopted as a framework in higher education in the Philippines. This is also in preparation for the implementation of K-12 in 2016, specifically of senior high school. Another background or context is the approval of Republic Act 10968, otherwise known as the PQF Act, which adopted the Philippine Qualifications Framework uh, for the country. This slide tells us the relationships of the different levels of education. You, you notice level six or L6 is actually for baccalaureate programs. So um, the, the sixth level, the highest is actually doctoral and postdoctoral programs. Each level actually requires certain outcomes. For example, for level six or for baccalaureate programs, graduates of undergraduate degrees, let's say Bachelor of Arts in Accountancy, Bachelor of Science in Psychology, we are expected to have broad and coherent knowledge and skills in, in their field of study for professional work and lifelong learning. They are also expected to apply in their professional work research and specialized uh, skills in their discipline or for further study in relation to lifelong learning. In terms of work, they are also expected to have some independence and they should be able to work in teams of individuals in related fields. This is because of the interdisciplinary or multi multidisciplinary approach that is usually now used in the field. And that is with minimal supervision. In the context of the COVID-19 pandemic, this is very important because workers now are expected to work remotely and certainly with some supervision. And they're also again expected to work in teams online. Now, since the shift to the OBE framework, our teachers here in Ateneo de Naga University have been implementing variations of blended learning, or BL, with elements made available online. But all these are actually to supplement face-to-face -face classroom instruction. We were doing this to make sure that the students will really learn independently and have predilection for lifelong learning. Independent learning, with independent learning, we hope, that they will also be able to work independently in teams. Then we had the COVID-19 pandemic. Soon after the enhanced community quarantine was declared last March 16, 2020, and regular face-to-face -face classes were suspended mid-semester. Higher education institutions, including Ateneo de Naga University, adopted online blended learning to be able to complete the second semester and ensure that our students continue with their education and complete earning units. This 2020 summer, or now the intercession, we offered courses on flexible learning and we are now on the final week of online classes. This first semester, school year 2020-2021, we will adopt flexible learning. It will be online initially and 
We are looking forward to a cautious return to face-to-face -to -face in campus classes later in the semester when that is allowed. And therefore, there is a need to adapt flexible learning uh, academic policies and guidelines. Our existing uh, provisions will have to be adjusted to suit the requirements of flexible learning. I will now focus on these adjustments. First, on the mode of instructional delivery and ICT requirements. Due to fluid situation of COVID-19 pandemic, where as you know, we review the provisions, the health protocols every 15 days. Instruction shall be carried out using flexible learning. And let's now understand what we mean by flexible learning. For this, we will be guided by the definition in the draft memorandum order of the Commission on Higher Education, where flexible learning is the design and delivery of programs, courses, and learning interventions that address learners' unique needs in terms of place, pace, process, and products of learning. So this will use digital and non-digital technology. It can be face-to-face or in-person learning, as well as out of classroom or online learning modes of delivery. It ensures the continuity of inclusive and accessible education for all. Flexible learning is also a pedagogical approach. Now, until such a time when a cautious return to face-to-face -to -face last sessions could be implemented, in keeping with CHED COVID advisory number seven issued last 24 May 2020, the flexible learning mode of instruction shall be carried fully online. It should be noted that CHED advisory number seven provides that face-to-face -face classes when permitted can only be allowed no earlier than September 1. Exceptions to full online classes are actually granted to some courses. And these courses include courses with class sessions which require the use of software like SPSS, SAP, DIM, which are available in the campus but cannot be accessed by students online. So for these class sessions, students will really have to be on campus or class sessions that require activities or experiments, which will have to be conducted in the laboratories or similar facilities, and which also require supervision due to safety and related requirements by our faculty. Also practicum, um, here we are making provisions for practicum, it's, like for the psychology students in the Psychological Services Center, for media study students like DevCon at our ARTV, for computer science and IT-related courses at our NOx, for engineering, the BIM laboratory, and other offices here in the university. Then we also have the related learning experience at the nursing laboratories for our nursing students. Now, even when face-to-face -face class sessions are already allowed, the courses in the preceding list, um, the faculty members may, in fact, continue to have online flexible learning mode of instruction, but this will have to be agreed with their students. We recognize that even if face-to-face -face is already allowed, some students may not be able to travel because of transportation constraints or Parents will not permit their students to come because of safety concerns. We do not expect the vaccine to be available soon, and therefore that's a valid concern. Now let's move to the learning management system, data privacy, and ICT requirements. Here in Ateneo Dinaga University, the Google Classroom shall be the default learning management system, or LMS, in times of flexible or blended learning. So all 
learning resources, electronic le learning resources shall be made available there and students can access the classrooms, the Google Classrooms. However, the teachers may still use other platforms to supplement Google Classroom and enhance students' access to the materials or enhance their participation, especially in asynchronous online sessions. All students intending to enroll are strongly advised to ensure that they have the provisions. Example of this is reliable internet access. Another one is they should have desktop or laptop because these are necessary to access electronic course materials and for them to participate in the synchronous and asynchronous online class sessions. All official communication between the teachers and their students will also be through the LMS or through the email using the official email accounts provided to members of the Ateneo de Naga University. These are at the gbox.adnu.edu.ph. We also enjoin all students and faculty members to observe data privacy regulations in all communication related to online class sessions. Also, only officially enrolled students may participate in classes. Pertinent to this, many of our provisions will also be adjusted. Example, allowing others to participate in online class sessions in their place is tantamount to passing course requirements as their own and thus covered by the guidelines on intellectual dishonesty. Now we move to study load and attendance of students. With a shift from face-to-face -to, -face to online flexible learning mode of instruction, the design of courses also shifts from class sessions defined by contact hours, this is the in-campus class hours, uh, the standard is 16 to 18 contact hours per unit of lecture. It's now, it will now shift to outcomes-based modules organized by or allotted with learning hours. By learning hours, we refer to estimated time that a student is engaged in learning experiences or tasks, like reading assigned texts, listening to recorded lectures, viewing video clips, etc., to meet the intended learning outcomes of the course. The learning experiences include items beyond those traditionally provided within the contact hours of face-to-face -face classes. If you notice, in the context of face-to-face -face classes, teachers, for example, will meet their classes three hours a week for three unit courses, but they give uh, assignments and course requirements. The time spent by students to do these assignments and course requirements are not covered by the contact hours. But in shifting to learning hours, all these times are already counted. Thus, for the three unit lecture class, a student is expected to devote three to 4.5 learning hours per week or for the entire semester, 50 to 75 hours for every three unit lecture class. Of course, the 75 hours per semester will, will already include independent study periods. Now we have uh, enjoined our faculty members to be mindful of the access constraints in designing their online sessions. Because most likely, our students will have at most two gigabytes of data allowance per day. And that is for all their online classes. A two gigabyte data allowance can provide, for example, for three hours of browsing and searching. It can also create 10 reports without images or videos and etc. So it is really important that we manage the data allowance of our students and also in some instances of our faculty. Thus, 
we will provide staggered schedules for synchronous online class sessions to optimize utilization of available bandwidth and data allowance within the effective limit of everyone. This slide provides additional information regarding what can be uh, conducted with a gigabyte of mobile internet. This next slide prov provides options depending on the data allowance from one gigabyte to five gigabyte. Most uh, providers uh, give two gigabytes uh, for a certain uh, amount. Number five, a student may enroll up to the maximum load for each term as indicated in the approved curriculum or prospectus of the degree program. However, anticipating issues and difficulties in adjusting to full online classes, our students are used to face-to-face, -to -face. now it's full online, we now advise our students to limit their study loads to 21 to 24 units only. Non-graduating students may be allowed an overload of at most three units if their cumulative quality point index or QPI is at least 2.75. The usual limit on total units for graduating students still applies. A stu graduating students will have to apply for additional load beyond the norm. Now, attendance regulation for students do not apply to classes when flexible learning is conducted fully online. This means that we will not be checking attendance of students during online classes, but their participation will be monitored. Now, let's go to the first day of class, the schedule of classes, and consultation hours. We will still have regular schedule of classes, and this will be indicated in the matriculation form of the students upon enrollment. All regular online, synchronous, and asynchronous class sessions will be held only during the regular schedule of the class, and this is to avoid scheduling conflicts. We don't want it to happen that several teachers are calling for simultaneous classes with uh, students enrolled in all the, these classes. Also, our full-time faculty members are still required to set aside and publish 7.5 hours for consultation per week, or this is actually 1.5 hours daily, Monday to Friday. This is beyond the class hours. We also have activity periods and this can be utilized for make up online classes in case of brownouts and other uh, exigencies. Teachers are enjoined to hold synchronous online sessions on the first day of class to present the syllabus, discuss important course regulations and requirements, and to make sure that all officially enrolled students are connected and on board. However, we will accommodate late enrollees and those unable to connect during the first day of classes. Later, when face-to-face -face classes are allowed and conducted, we will observe social distancing and other related health protocols. For example, we will split classes when the number of students exceed 25 and they will have alternative sessions with one having face-to-face -face classes while the other group will have independent study with guidance from the teachers. Now, core syllabus, student evaluation, and grading. The faculty members will prepare core syllabus, and this will follow the prescribed template. The core syllabus will be uploaded in the LMS, which is Google Classroom, and made available to enrolled students at the start of the semester. Of course, the students are expected to download a copy of the core syllabus 
for their classes so that they can re readily refer to the syllabus for their learning activities, especially in times of independent study. More importantly, the components like projects, participation in class discussions, etc., of grading and their weights will be indicated in the course syllabus. Rubrics for evaluating the gra grading components will also be provided or discussed with the students. Where possible or applicable, the tentative deadlines for the submission of course requirements will already be set by the teacher at the start of the semester and also indicated in the syllabus. In person, or if that's not possible, secure online major preliminary midterm pre-final or final examinations will be administered. Or the teachers can also replace these major examinations with outcomes-based course requirements. There is, however, an exception. In courses which are covered by licensure examinations, the comprehensive final examinations will not be replaced by other requirements. This is to ensure that our students will be able to pass the licensure examinations required for them to practice their profession after graduation. The department chairs will identify these courses for the approval of the deed. Exam permits will still be required for students to take the examinations. And we also have policy guidelines for delayed exams. And these guidelines are normally uh, provided to the students during the orientation settings or the orientation for upperclassmen. Now, in the event that the face to face class sessions for the courses described before, these are the laboratories, the RLE for nursing, etc. When these are not completed uh, in the semester because of exigencies like all of a sudden uh, the enhanced community quarantine is again imposed or there's a lockdown in the, in the area where the student is residing, the affected students will be given temporary marks of in progress or IP instead of the usual INC. This is to differentiate the situation from INC because it's not the fault of the student that the sessions are not completed. Since attendance regulations do not apply in classes delivered fully online, the grades of AF, which means failure due to excessive absences, are not applicable in such classes. Now I'd like to uh, also present the academic calendar for school year 2020-2021. The first semester will start on August 3, 2020. That's the first day of classes, okay? Uh, the first week will also be late registration. Then a month after on September 2 to 5 will already be the preliminary exams. Of course, in September we'll also have the Peña Francia festivities starting with the translation on September 11 and the Peña Francia Fiesta period on September 17 to 21. Uh, then on October 7 to 10 and 12 to 13, you will have the midterm exams. Then a month later, we will have the final exams on November 6 to 10. And then again, after a month, the final exams on December 7, 9 to 12 and 14. The deadline for the submission of grades is on 21 December 2020, and we'll end the semester on December 2022. So that's all. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sir Fred, for as the background and the policies to be implemented during this period. Uh, if our viewers have any questions or clarifications regarding what has been discussed, you may send them to us through the comment section so our administrators may respond to them uh, later. This, later. Okay. Uh, for the next presentation, as mentioned by Dr. Fred, Google Classroom shall be the default 
learning management system in the times of flexible learning. Uh, the OIC Dean of the College of Computer Studies, Mr. Joshua Martinez, will give us a walkthrough of the Google Classroom. Thank you very much, uh, Ma'am Bernie. Uh, good afternoon to our viewers. My presentation this afternoon is on the digital home base for uh, online learning in the colleges. So first, let us try to understand what a digital home base is. So from the definition, when you say digital home base, it's a digital platform. It's an online platform. It's in the cyberspace where students can go or visit to access recent and relevant information about their enrolled courses or subjects. So in, uh, in essence, it's basically uh, this is where teaching and learning happens. So this is some sort of your go-to place for your enrolled courses. Now, before the pandemic, our home base, obviously, is our campus. You come literally to the Ateneo campus to attend classes on specific classrooms and time schedules. So there you interact with your teachers and classmates. But now that we are in a pandemic, face-to-face uh, -face teaching and learning, of course, is not yet permitted. So we bring the classrooms online or in cyberspace. So teaching and learning now happens virtually or online. But the big question is, what is the digital home base for the Ateneo de Naga University Colleges? So the answer uh, for that question is, it will be Google Classroom. So Google Classroom is a free web uh, service app developed by Google to manage classrooms virtually. So this tool will be our LMS or learning management system for the colleges. So this particular web app will help students and teachers organize assignments, boost collaboration, and even foster better communication. So what does Google Classroom do? Now it has plenty of features, features for teachers, features for students, and even for parents. Now for students, uh, there are a lot of things that you can do. You can submit assignments, you can view announcements, and e even you can see your grades. You can access and view uh, lecture materials posted by your teachers. You can take tests. Uh, you can interact with teachers and classmates via the video conferencing tool in the Google Classroom. Now for uh, parents, you will be able to monitor your uh, the progress of your child. So you can actually subscribe to a particular class and you will be able to receive summaries of your child's progress. Plus, you can communicate with the subject teacher. Now, Google Classroom is just one app that you can use once you have the school uh, email account or we call it the Gbox account. The other tools are collaborative tools. So these are the tools that you see now on screen and it can be used with Google Classroom. So example would be your Gmail for communication, uh, Google Drive for online storage, Calendar for your schedule, Google Docs for your document sheets for spreadsheets, slides, and others. So Ateneo has been in partnership with Google since 2015 with the use of their Google Suite for education. So I can say that Ateneo de Naga provides you G Suite for your Jesuit education. So how will you access Google Classroom or any of the apps in the Google Suite for Education? Now, upon enrollment, or once you are enrolled, you will be given an official school email account. So that will be your name at the domain of Ateneo. That's gbox.adnu.edu.ph. So you will use this school email account to access applications in Google and other applications developed in-house by our MIS office. Example would be the web-based enrollment system or MyAdnu. So how do you now access Google Classroom? So two ways, you can open a browser or you can access it via the Google Apps menu found when you open uh, Gmail. So all you need to do is to open a browser, that's the first step, type in uh, classroom.google.com in the Omni box or the address bar. And then once you hit the enter key, you'll be prompted with the classroom page. 
Or if not, if you are uh, logged in at Gmail, so you can just go to the uh, Google Apps menu. So those are the nine small buttons at the upper right portion of your screen. Click it and you'll see the Google Classroom uh, icon and then uh, you'll be prompted to the Google Classroom uh, page. So once you click Google Classroom, you'll be prompted to the Classroom page where you see, of course, the classes available for you. So if you are a freshman, uh, once you log in at Google Classroom, you'll be seeing your classes already with your teachers and, of course, your classmates. So what you see now are your classes. So once you click a particular class, like, for example, this class in uh, digital animation, uh, digital arts and computer animation, so you'll be seeing the course code, the course description, you'll be seeing the uh, class code, and there's a link where you can do, uh, where, uh, there's a link that you can click, and that link will um, go to Google Meet, wherein you can, of course, meet your classmates and teachers synchronously or in real time. So uh, the other feature of that stream, uh, the other feature will be the stream page wherein you can uh, view announcements of your teachers and, of course, post uh, view the posted classwork of your teachers. Now, you can also look into the classwork page or tab where you can see assignments and materials related to your class. So this is where you will submit and take scheduled online tests. You can also access here your Google Calendar because any assignments posted by your teachers will be synced to your Google Calendar so, you, so that you can be alerted on the deadline. And also, of course, the Google Drive of the class. Now, aside from this, you'll be seeing, of course, your classmates. It's in the People uh, tab. So you'll be seeing your classmates from there and, of course, uh, your teacher or your teachers. You can also look into your grades. So all submitted grades uh, and evaluated assignments will appear in the grade book. Now, if you are wondering uh, what the grade book of the teacher would look like, it looks like that one. So there you have it. That's a taste of your digital home base. So if you decide to enroll and be an Athenian, there will be a session on the use of Google Classroom during the freshman orientation. And don't worry, upperclassmen, because there will be, of course, orientation on the use of Google Classroom. So should you have questions or comments, just post it on the chat box. Chat, chat box. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Josh. Uh, we hope that with the thorough discussion, our students and also the parents watching right now understand better how this LMS will be maximized for the learning experience of the students. Okay, in this time of flexible learning, our students will need to use laptops, desktops, and internet connection. Uh, in the university's effort to help find affordable and reliable resources for the students, we have partnered with companies and service providers to offer special promos for our students. Uh, Engineer Zero Magallon, the director for the Network Operations and Computer Systems of the university, will now share with us the offerings available. For a moment, uh, we will just uh, check the technical difficulty. Hello, Bernie. Yes, yeah, now you have a sound, sir. Okay. Uh, can you kindly repeat uh, what you've said before? Ah, sorry. As I was saying, uh, Athena being part of the Asia Academy entitles us to a faculty and a student uh, purchase program discount for the different uh, laptops available from Acer. So this promo runs from May 15 to August 15, 2020. And we have uh, two identified IT partners. One is Manila-based and the other one is uh, Naga-based partner. That is uh, Aden Computers and the other one is 3GX Solutions. 
as to the different uh, uh, we have the following let me just share the price list for the different laptops available okay so by the way per person can only uh you can only purchase a maximum of two units for these laptops so if you, uh, for you to be able to avail of this specific discount, you need to present your university ID upon purchase. And then these are the different uh, laptops available for the discount uh, promo. Take note that usually the lower price range laptops are already uh, not available. You have uh, i5s, i3s. So you may just uh, shoot me an email at nox at gbox at edu.ph for a copy of this uh, list. So you can see you have sufficient uh, discounts, you know, from let's say you, you have a 31,999 down to 28,999. And there, from uh, entry level laptops the, up to uh, gaming laptops. Another thing I'd like to share uh, with the incoming uh, students of Ateneo would be the data plans available. Uh, we were able to strike a deal with. Uh, our partners in uh, TLDT and Globe. They'll be giving us uh, this load learn 500. This would be for TLDT and Smart. Okay. This specific uh, promo would entitle our students uh, 8 gig open access data uh, plus a 3 gig per day data uh, access. And then if you do not have your own uh, pocket Wi-Fi, you can also purchase a 995 worth of pocket Wi-Fi from a Smart. As for the Globe option, you have uh, Eduk 500. So at the cost of 999, you already have the Wi-Fi router plus the Eduk 500 uh, promo. This would basically entitle you with a 40 gig uh, allocation all in all for a month, meaning 10 gig uh, open access plus one gig daily access, uh, which is basically valid for 30 days. Now, the usual question, how do we avail of the postpaid plan? Basically, you need to drop by our office and then uh, sign up. Uh, you need to uh, personally be here since it uh, it would entail uh, charging a certain amount in your uh, student uh, record, so you need to be here to sign your uh, the forms. That's it for me. Thank you very much, Sir Zero. Again, as mentioned by Sir Zero, for our students, you may contact Knox by sending an email to Knox. That's N O C E S at gbox.adnu.edu.ph for assistance in availing of the promos. Thank you, Sir Zero. Okay, so now we come to the most anticipated part of the session, the question and answer or the open forum. We thank those who have already sent their questions and encourage others to send theirs. Uh, so aside from Sir Fred, Sir Josh, and Sir Zero, other administrators are also with us to respond to, to, respond to your questions. We have uh, Dr. Digna Alba, Dean of the College of Humanities and Social Sciences, Engineer Referendo Soriano, Dean of the College of Science and Engineering, Ms. Mary Monsalvamante, College Registrar, Ms. Evelyn Amaro, Director of the College Admission and Aid Office, Dr. Luz Badiola, Dean of the College of Education, Mr. Christopher Abilinde, Dean of the College of Business and Accountancy, Ms. Delia Ojo, uh, Dr. Del, uh, uh, Ms. Delia Ojo, Dean of the College of Nursing, and Ms. Cynthia Correo, Chair of the Literature and Language Studies. Okay, 
So let's uh, check some of the comments and questions we've received so far. Uh, we will uh, uh, give the question to Sir Fred, and maybe Sir Fred can just delegate uh, to whom uh, the response would be coming from. Okay, from Mr. Amir Gabriel Ordas, would there still be PE classes and NSTP classes? That's the question, Sir Fred. Okay, um, we will still have uh, PE classes and NSTP classes. Um, let me just focus on NSTP, then Ma'am Lut uh, Bajola can uh, respond for PE. For NSTP, as you know, we are offering the civic welfare training uh, programs or system, uh, which is CWPS. So we, can, we will start with lectures on regarding civic welfare training, and then the application portions when we feel students to uh, be able to do the assignments and the requirements, that can be done later when face-to-face -face, uh, sessions are allowed. Or if not, then probably we can come up with alternatives for certain work online. For example, helping barangays come up with their uh, online systems to track uh, uh, migrants in, for COVID-19. That can be one of uh, civic welfare programs. So certainly we'll be able to offer uh, NSTP. Now for PE, Ma'am Lut, uh, please respond. Uh, hi, uh, let me answer your question, Amir. Will, will, there, will there still be PE classes? Yeah, definitely there will be because PE classes will be conducted through uh, lecture. Uh, there will be what you call live demonstration and recorded lecture. And students will be doing a simulation of certain activities that your teachers will require. I hope that will do. Thank you. Thank you, Ma'am Aluth, and thank you, Sir Fred. Another question from Disco Eats. How do we avail of the Acer discount? Uh, do we purchase it from ADNU? Can it be delivered to, uh, to outside NAGA students? We need to personally uh, deal with the IT partners. So you need to go to 3JX if you'd be go, uh, buying it from NAGA. But if you'd be buying it from, uh, let's say, Arden Computers, you may need to communicate with them through email or uh, through phone. But as to purchase, it will not be through Ateneo Dinaga. So we'll just be uh, giving you the information as to the laptops, the prices. But you'd be the one personally dealing with the uh, IT partners. And then as to the delivery outside Naga City, I think you can negotiate with Aren for a delivery from Manila, but for 3GX, which is Naga base, I think you can uh, directly go to their store. Okay, thank you, Sir Zero. Okay, from Dino Angelo Di Makulangan, how will SRA classes be conducted? Mom Diggs, probably you can answer that. Mom Diggs? Okay, uh, Bernie, probably I'll take it. Um, okay. The SRA classes will now be also uh, taken online. We have uh, availed of another provider so that the uh, students can continue with the SRA classes online. Um, the details of that will again be through their Google Classroom so that they can uh, uh, take the online sessions. It's really using, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Scholastic. It's part of the uh, uh, advertisements that uh, we have been having. Thank you very much, Sir Fred. Another question. From Francisco Paterno, hi, what about the student assistance? Will their scholarship still be in place? If yes, what will be the changes for the school year? Okay, Ma'am Bilen, that's your forte. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, Francis. 
So for the student assistance, you can renew your scholarship this coming semester. So however, they, you are not yet allowed to uh, render service within the university. So until further notice. So the required number of hours will be served if you are already allowed to enter the campus. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ma'am Belen. Okay, for um, ordering the in, uh, David Sabino, for Engineer Zero Magalion, maybe the question is, could, could you suggest a desktop computer package option for both students and teachers for either online teaching or online or, or learning since we will be mostly doing home-based classes? Your suggestion may be, sir. Uh, hi, Sir Dave. Uh, as to the actual specs, I've already released a, a, a memo in the university regarding this. But uh, okay. based from Hangout and Zoom, the minimum would be an i3, core i3 processor for your laptop or desktop. And at least a minimum of 4 gig memory. So that would be your uh, primary consideration in buying a desktop or a laptop whatever is the model, as long as you have that. Uh, at least i3, uh, i-core uh, i 3 uh, processor, and then at least a 4 gig memory. Or you can go for the Ryzen uh, option, Ryzen 3 option. Okay. Uh, from... okay. From Joshua Velasco. How about po, Ma'am Bilen, uh, yung remaining hours ng student assistance before the ECQ po, same din po ba for their notice if allowed na mag-serve? Mag Good afternoon, Josh. Yes. So you can render service or you can complete the remaining number of hours. So when you are allowed to uh, enter the campus. Thank okay. you. Thank you, Ma'am Belen. Okay, uh, before the session, no, we also collated questions uh, through the uh, social media sites that we've received from the students and some parents. So I will ask some of the questions we've uh, gathered aside from the live comments. So one question is for, I think this is more of, uh, guidelines for giving assignments and projects. Uh, what are the guidelines in giving assignments and projects, particularly for submissions of outputs for engineering classes? So probably Doc Ref Soriano can take that. Doc Ref. Hello, sir. Hello. Yes. Yes, Dr. sir. Ref. Uh, well, uh, guidelines. Okay, ma'am. Guidelines yes. for assignments depend on the teacher handling the subjects. Mm -hmm. And the teacher will discuss this with the students during their first day of classes. They have different rubrics. Uh, depends on uh, their learning objectives. Uh, for example, there is a different assessment between a problem set and a simulation problem. Projects are usually given in laboratory subjects. There are different ways of delivering the laboratory activities depending on the nature of the course which build up to the projects. Samples are simulation, part simulation, part skill-based, and skill-based activities. Simulations can be done online, but skill-based activities may be conducted in the laboratory and therefore requires face-to-face -face classes in the, in the campus. An exception is when kits are commercially available, the students can purchase and they are then guided online to perform the skill-based activity. If the laboratory activities that require face-to-face -face classes in the laboratories are not completed in the se this semester due to uh, sudden ECQs, the students are given tentative grades of IP or in progress. Yun lang po, Ma'am Bernie. Thank you po. Okay. Thank you, Sir Ref. Okay. There's another question from the live comments from Disco Eats. What if the student doesn't have the equipment needed for the subject? Example, uh, Wacom for DIA. 
Uh, Sir Josh, that's that's your college. Yes, Sir Fred. Actually, the instruction I gave to my chairs is to be mindful of the offerings uh, for the next term. So if the subject requires a heavy use on gadgets or equipment, then probably postpone the offering for the second semester because the instruction is will go full online. And also if there are say equipment that requires Wacom, uh, there will be alternatives. So probably we can ask them to just have the digital pen instead of the entire uh, Wacom gadget. Thank you, Sir Josh. There's another question from Mr. Orinda In. What will we do with classes when there's a Naga wide brownout? Hi, Dave. Certainly, in that case, uh, we cannot do online unless we have uh, generators uh, going here in the campus. But our students will not be able to go online. So it's then best to simply schedule uh, catch up uh, sessions later. Uh, hopefully the, the uh, periods of brown out, of brown out will not be prolonged. If, if that happens, if prolonged uh, power failures occur, then we will have to streamline sessions or extend the semester. Bottom line is we should be able to uh, complete the minimum learning of outcomes for the course. Okay. Thank you, Sir Fred. Another follow-up question for Ma'am Belen. How about po yung back accounts sa, ng SA na covered for second SEM? Will there be no conflict with the first SEM enrollment since our service is not yet done and credited? Thanks. Okay. That's from Reynaldo Samudio. Okay, good afternoon, Ray. I think you are referring to the number of hours, right? So for the number of hours that you are required to render during the second semester, so we will assure you that uh, we will grant you a temporary in, uh, renewal of scholarship. So until uh, you complied with all the requirements of the SA program. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Thank Belen. you, Ma'am Belen. Uh, hi, uh, Bernie. Uh, yes, Sir Fred. My context yung uh, tanong ni Ray. I, I think he's also concerned about uh, overlapping requirements. They will be completing, for example, the unserved requirements of the second semester. Then on top of that, they will have the requirements for the second semester. It's possible that they will run out of time to complete that depending on the situation of COVID-19. You know very well that we review the guidelines every 15 days. So, baka nga naman talaga magpatong-patong ito. Ako from my end, I hope you will agree, Ma'am Belenas, that we will be mindful about the welfare of our students. Yes, Certainly, sir. We will not require them to serve. It really, it's very difficult to do that because of the continuing situation of COVID-19. Yes. We don't want to place our students. Uh, uh, we don't want to undermine the safety of our students just so that they can serve. So I think that's that's the, the bottom line here. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, since uh, on, on screen pa si Ma'am uh, Belen, may follow-up question si, sir, uh, si Mr. Joshua Velasco. Uh, okay. Regarding po back accounts, are we allowed to pay only half of the amount and we can be allowed to enroll this coming semester, or are we obliged to pay the whole amount of back account? Josh, I think I need to refer you to the treasurer's office because in terms of payment, they are in charge of that. So I, I think I know, that's the right thing to do right now. So you have to talk to Sir Donny for your back accounts. Thank you. Okay, thank you, ma'am. We, we'll also take note of this question so we can prepare uh, answers if ever there would be queries for this in our social media accounts. Thank you, Joshua. So from uh, Eunice Toriano, paano po ang system ng fieldwork ng BSEM students since part po siya ng curriculum namin? Uh, eh? EM. Uh, that's uh, from your college. 
If you can take that question, please. Hello, sir. Uh, hello. Yes, sir. Hello, sir. Hello. Uh, yes. Right now, po, on hold po muna yung mga ano natin sa field, field work. work. Opo, on hold po muna siya. But we're actually talking with, I, we're talking with your department chairperson regarding a substitute for your field work or equivalent. But as of now, yung field work natin, naka-on hold po muna siya. Okay, thank you. So you need field work are on hold as of now. Uh, okay. Yes, Bernie. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, generally, uh, for requirements which cannot be met because of constraints related to COVID-19, uh, CHED allows for substitute or alternative activities. So we will uh, be guided by that uh, advisory from CHED. Again, the bottom line is we, will don't, we don't want to undermine the health, uh, the safety of our students just yes. to comply with requirements. Okay. Thank you, Sir Fred, for highlighting that. Okay. Uh, I'll get question again from the social media related uh, questions. Uh, there's a question uh, on what if the student has low internet connection, what adaptive measures may be implemented beyond the online class? Uh, Josh, can you take that question, please? So the question is, what if the student has low internet connection, what adaptive measures may be implemented beyond the online classes? Yes, thank you, Ms. Uh, Bernie. Uh, actually, the Ateneo de Naga University Flexible Learning will mostly be asynchronous and less synchronous. Now, this strategy considers foremost, of course, the student's internet connectivity. Mm -hmm. Now, if ever the students uh, have no internet access or if not their areas, uh, have no internet access or service, then uh, Atene Dinag University is currently exploring the use of an offline portable learning management system. And that particular system can fit uh, in a flash drive. Now, details on this, of course, will be released soon. Okay. Thank you, Sir Joshua. Uh, another question from the live comments from Reynaldo Samudio again. For the College of Nursing, is there already a system on how we are going to take our RE, RLE this first semester? Thank you. Maybe this is for Paul. Mam Tin? Mam Tin Tin. Okay, let's check Mountain. Let's just return to that uh, question later, uh, Bernie. Okay, yes. We'll go back to this question uh, when, when, uh, once Mountain is uh, back in the... Uh, no. Okay, another question. This is from a parent. How do you ensure that the students will learn from the online classes? Okay, uh, I'll take that, Bernie. Okay, sir. Uh, we have covered uh, we have covered uh, the presentation of, uh, of Google Classroom and etc. And also touch on particulars related to the concern raised by the parent. So mm -hmm. as mentioned, the modular approach to instruction, so it's by modules, whether online or offline through, after they have downloaded, they can do independent study using the module. So the modular approach to instruction ensures that the, that, that the targeted learning outcomes are aligned with the program expectations through careful dissection of the targeted competencies for the course. We have trained our teachers to design instructional modules that meet CHED standards. The printed modules are digitized and converted into online teaching materials to make them appropriate to the learning modality and to maximize student engagement cognitively and socially. Okay. So, you, in addition, yeah. uh, one way of ensuring that they actually uh, are able to cope, um, we have required our teachers, even before, kahit noong face-to-face -face learning pa tayo, 
we have required teachers to declare consultation hours. And so this time the, the teachers will be available online in addition to the, con to the class hours, the regular class hours, so that students can connect with the teachers and follow up on certain difficulties that they have in working with the modules. Okay, okay. thank you, Sir Fred. I will go back to the question for College of Nursing. For Mamtin, is there already a system on how we are going to take our RLE this first semester? Yes, Mamtin? Okay, we'll go back again to Mamtin. Okay, uh, we have a question from Sir David. How available will the com campus facilities be for both teachers and students when internet connection at home goes really bad? Okay, let me, know, uh, let me answer that. We are making available the facilities of the school. In fact, we are preparing uh, at least two venues, Savior Hall in the gymnasium, where we will set up uh, tables, uh, power access so that students can do their online work there, connect to the internet there. But really, the constraint here is, will the students be allowed to go to campus? Because that's dependent really on ITAF regulations, which change every 15 days. Mm -hmm. And meantime, you have a zone here in Naga City that's locked down. So uh, it's really it, uh, access to these facilities in the campus will depend on on uh, guidelines whether uh, teachers and students will be able to travel because of uh, COVID nineteen regulations. Uh, okay. We have problems with teachers because the prohibition is really twenty and below age so, mm -hmm. persons age twenty and below. And for senior citizens, 60 and above, most of our teachers are actually in the in the 21 to under 60, so they will be able to travel. Ang constraint na lang dyan is when they have transportation concerns, okay, or they're not allowed to leave their localities because of localized COVID uh, prohibitions. Okay, thank you, sir. And uh, another question uh, from. Uh, KTVs, are we required to wear uniform during classes, especially during PE period? Uh, let me answer that, uh, Bernie. Uh, during online classes, synchronous, we are not requiring uniform. We are just asking the students to follow the dress code. What do I mean by dress code? Ano yung allowed during wash day on a Wednesday? Just follow the guidelines for the dress code on a Wednesday, then you're good. For PE classes, even if it's online, it's best that you use the uniform because if, if you will be asked to demonstrate certain moves, then it's best that you will be in your uh, uniform. Okay. Of course, uh, again, acceptable dress code for PE classes in the absence of a uniform, I, I, suggest, I, I would imagine it also be acceptable. But we recommend PE uniform for PE classes still, even if you're doing it at home. Okay. Thank you, Sir Fred. From Nagapi, how about the library? Can it be can it be accessed and can we borrow books during this coming SEM? Okay, Ma'am Edna. Ed, your your sound. Okay. We allow books to be borrowed uh, for home use, no? For two weeks. Yes, two weeks. All they have to do is to um, go to the library website, check the reference or check the titles that they want to ask to borrow, and then fill up a form on the online services namin. And then uh, we will acknowledge the... We will acknowledge the your request and then the, the time will pick up. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. So for pick up, ma'am, yung uh, yung uh, yes. borrowing yes. ng books. Okay. Yes. Is there an option, ma'am, for uh, courier delivery? Um, we are trying to discuss that, or we are trying to include that in our services. But the question is, will the students, uh, parang required to pay for the pama for the yeah. cheap. For shipping the or the PO, but it's like Panda delivery though. We have okay. that kind of idea, but uh, we are trying to discuss that. Okay. Thank you, Ma'am Edna. Hi, Bernie. Related yes. to that, I related to that, uh, our teachers have been alerted to prioritize using e-books so that they don't need to borrow hard copies. Of course, there's a limitation because uh, in some disciplines, uh, you don't have too many e-books. In some disciplines, you have more. But to the extent possible, our teachers have been uh, advised to uh, prioritize electronic books so that we will not have a problem regarding uh, physically borrowing books. Okay. Maybe this question with uh, from, from KTVs is also related to this. How about books are we required to buy? Siguro, sir, referring to reference uh, books. Um, maybe maybe the, those are textbooks. Yeah. Yes. Uh, for example, I know that in accountancy, some of the textbooks, because we're following Philippine standards, uh, these are books by local authors. And usually, these are not electronic books. But they are available locally. So mm -hmm. just like in a face-to-face -face setting, our students will be... Uh, advice to purchase the books okay sir no offense sir but for some references if it's if there if the books are not available locally meaning you cannot buy it or it's very expensive uh, usually if it's a reference the teacher will just for the class the requirement let's say is one chapter or so or some 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 pages for one book another section in another book uh, this will be scanned and uploaded in the google classroom uh, the library is assisting the, the teachers, our teachers, to, to scan these materials so that the student need not borrow the book just to access a chapter or so. The chapter is scanned and uploaded in the LMS. So that's another option. Okay. Thank you, Sir Fred. Question from Mark R.J. Reyes. In five unit subjects po, may laboratory, na, na may laboratory requirement, is the subject, uh, will the subject be offered along with the lecture puba? Um, before I throw it to the, to the deans, let me just provide a context because you can have a laboratory subject where the lecture is and the laboratories are integrated. The laboratory components are integrated. So let's say it's a five unit, three unit, a lecture to unit lab, and it's just reported as five units. Then you can also have a subject where the lecture is a different subject matched with a different laboratory component. These are enrolled separately. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we will respond based on the assumption that these are two separate subjects, which is usually the case in the College of Engineering. So I'll now ask uh, Doc Ref to respond. Hello. Yes, sir. Well, reg regarding the, you know, the laboratory offering, uh, kanina, I discussed regarding kung ano yung klaseng laboratory. Meron din kasing laboratory na uh, pure simulations, may half na yung parang may semi siya, may, may skill base and may simulation, and then may, ano, yung may skill base na. Uh, because hindi pwedeng i-permit muna yung face-to-face, -face, so lalabas doon, uh, in progress po muna yung mga laboratory na skill base. So yes, the laboratory will still be offered by, by, the, ano, by, the, by the school. Bye okay. Thank, thank you, sir. Uh, Bernie? Uh, yes, sir. Another case is, for example, sa biology, except for microbiology, the teachers were able to uh, come up with alternative activities that the students can do online. So, uh, except for microbiology. 
of course, for chemistry, there's no recourse but to really have the laboratory in our chemistry lab. So physics, there are some experiments that can be simulated. So it will really depend on the subject. But at any rate, uh, the laboratory activities, because they will be conducted in campus, may be scheduled later in the semester when face-to-face -face classes will already be permitted. Yes. So until such a time, we really are uh, constrained from conducting the laboratory classes. In the meantime, yes. the laboratory class schedule can be utilized for the lecture. So mauuna na yung lecture para pag, sa dulo ng semester, yung mga laboratories na lang. So hindi uh, at least uh, you make up, may time tayo for the make up uh, laboratory using the lecture schedule na. Okay. Thank you, Sir Fred. Okay, another question from uh, live comments from uh, Rian Gale K. Gratil. What will happen po to subjects, especially IAM P222, uh, two, 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 Information Analysis and Design, BSBA AIM course po, that was were not offered last intercession? So, ano do po? what will happen? Will this be offered uh, this coming semester or something? So, Doc, Doc Chris Abilinde, uh, if you can answer the question, please. Doc Chris? Doc Chris? Okay, we'll get back to uh, Ms. Gratil's question. Another question from Nagapi, yung examinations po ba in campus or online? Um, ideally, examination should be conducted face-to-face -face or in-person in the campus uh, because we, we want to ascertain or to ensure integrity of the exams. Uh, if you look at the schedule of exams, the prelims will already be in September. By then, based on projection, face-to-face, uh, -face, in-person classes will already be allowed. So hopefully, the major exams can already be conducted here in the campus. But we recognize that some of the students cannot yet travel. For all we know, some of our students are in Manila and will have difficulty really going back here in Bicol. Lalo na ngayon na medyo nag-lockdown na naman because of the upsurge in the COVID-19 cases. So, uh, the the uh, ano, the university is currently exploring ways of administering secure online examinations uh, for students who cannot make it. Okay. But uh, again, ideally, it will be face-to-face. -face. But we are not closing the, to the possibility of making available online exams. Our only concern is how can we make sure that it is a secured exam? Yes. Okay. Uh, Sir Chris is already here. The question for Sir Chris was, what will happen to the subjects, especially information analysis and design from a BSBA IAM, IAM course uh, that was or were not offered last session, a uh, last intercession class? Thank you for the question. Good afternoon, Rian. The AIM 222 Information Analysis and Design, as well as other computer subjects, right now we're looking into alternatives where they can be offered online. If they can be offered online, then we shall proceed with it this coming first semester. Like for example, right now, we're talking with FASTRA, the provider of SAP, so we can have it offered online via SAP Cloud. Okay, thank you, sir. I hope that answers the question. Okay, sir. Thank you. Uh, can we go back to the question for the nursing, College of Nursing for Mumpton? Okay. For the College of Nursing, Po, is there already a system on how we are going to take our RLE this first semester? Mumpton? Okay. 
Okay, a doctor sent her reply. Maybe she's having difficulty uh, for, for the video online. No? Uh, the, the response is, yes, we have our RLE. RLE has various settings, the community, hospital, and skills laboratory. When the deans of nursing schools had a conversation with a member of CHED technical panel and who happens to be the national president of ADPCN National, she mentioned that due to the uncertainties, uncertainties of what we are experiencing at the moment, if hospitals and community cannot accommodate yet the students, the students will have their RLE in the Nursing Skills Laboratory for the time being. So I hope that answers your questions, Reynaldo. Okay, for question from uh, Breath Retro. Sa bandwidth po ng internet plan, paano man po yung difference in terms of usage of data? Like how we know if this sor uh, source will be charged to the open access data or the one gig per day, day data? Uh, zero or uh, Josh, but expertise niyo yan. So if you can respond to the question, please. Hi, sir. Uh, I'll be the one to answer po kay Brett uh, Retro. Hi, Brett. Uh, in terms of usage, if you go back to the presentation ko earlier, yung 8 gig, for example, for Smart and PLDT, you have 8 gig open access data. Pero yung actually daily allowance mo for LMS, like Moodle, uh, uh, Word, Excel, PowerPoint na Office 365, uh, WordPress, etc., Google Classroom, Lahat yan, uh, charge dun sa 3 gig per day na allocation. Okay? For example, uh, you had two classes in a video conference. Usually, a video video conference would consume, let's say, about 2 gig of data. No? Kung HD siya. So, anything in excess of the 3 gig will be charged dun sa open access data natin. Okay. Thank you, Sir Zero. Uh, there's a question from Sir David again. Uh, uh, we'll also be coming up with a modified student's handbook which incorporates our new circumstances of the new normal. So since ano, wala po tayong representative from OSA, we will take note of this question. Uh, we'll reply to this question na lang, uh, by, by Monday or later this afternoon. Uh, we'll, yes, sir? Um, we're actually uh, looking into uh, the existing policy, gu policy guidelines and how we can modify mm -hmm. them to respond to the situation. So okay, that's actually a work in progress. If you notice, inumpisan na natin sa academic policies, which is yes. part of my presentation. Uh, already I mentioned yung sa intellectual uh, honesty, which is important in the context yes. of online classes. Uh, so, certainly, we will look into this, pero most probably, we will not be able to print uh, hard copies. Baka yes. digital, ano lang to, digital format and uh, send to students through their Gmail, uh, G, uh, my admin accounts. Okay. But it will take some time. I said the, the, the general direction is we will adopt the existing guidelines for the flexible learning environment. Okay. Thank you, Sir Fred. Question from Nagapi. How many hours po yung synchronous? Uh, for example, I have classes for eight hours a day. With, will it also take the same number of hours online? Um, Bernie, not necessarily. Let's let's deal with this on a per-class basis. Let's mm -hmm. say you're enrolled in a three-unit class. Ordinarily, that's kung face to face, that's three hours of lecture. Right? And ngayon online na. So in an online setting, we still expect that the online class will be for three hours. But the synchronous portion is at most one hour per week. Mm -hmm. So for example, the teacher can split that. Let's say Monday, Wednesday, one and a half hour per day, one and a half hour on a Monday. The one and a half hour can only be, let's say, 30 minutes synchronous. The rest, asynchronous or independent study. 
but the student can still contact the teacher within the time period in case the student needs guidance in doing the task in addition to the consultation hours of the teacher. Okay, so ganun po. We're limiting it. And we're also mindful about the schedule. Kasi nga, ayaw natin na nagsasabay-sabay yung synchronous kasi may impact din yan sa bandwidth ng school. And at the same time, yung limit, yung date allowance ng estudyante. Mm -hmm. Which yes, I covered in my, my presentation at the start of the webinar. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you po, sir. Another question. The concern I have is if at home we only have one or two laptops and data is limited and we have three students, it will be difficult to divide the time as well as bandwidth consumption. Kadugtong po ito nung question kanina regarding uh, asynchronous class, no? I think this is where the person is coming from. So, yun. Siguro yung divide, pag-divide nila ng schedule ng pag-online ng students. Um, Bernie? Yes, Paul. Uh, at the start, ano lang, just to provide a context, at the start of the semester, we uh, have instructed the teachers to find out the, the situation of their students. Mga ganitong klase, so mm -hmm. that the teacher can also manage the how the resources will be uh, made available to the, to the students and when. At least for certain students, the teacher can make certain adjustments. Yes. I think we only need to understand the constraints here and uh, make adjustments accordingly. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Sir Fred. Of course, the Nasiro can probably also respond from the technical point of view. Yes. Yes, Sir Fred. Thank you. Uh, for Naga P, uh, if, especially if you have two or more people using the internet at home, no? it would be best to get yung mga fixed uh, wide uh, subscriptions like Fiber to Home or DSL since they are not capped based on the bytes use mm -hmm. or the data use, but more of, uh, let's say, more of the speed. So, oh, mas okay yung unlimited na the tapered lang yung speed kesa you're counting the bytes. Especially if you have more classes, so it will consume a lot of bytes. And it will be cheaper that way and a zero. Yes, sir. Oh, oh. Mm -hmm. For example, you'd just be paying, let's say, 1,000, pero unlimited yung, ano mo, yung access to the internet. And then mm -hmm. you'll not be charged to the bytes. So mm -hmm. you can have three classes or whatever number of classes per day, pero you still have that fixed amount every month. Yes, sir. Uh, taking your point. For example, tatlo kayo sa bahay. So, yung offer ngayon is 500 a month na 2 gigs a day, di ba? Okay. A data allowance a day. Kung tatlo kayo, that means already 1.5. One, one but you're limited to 2 gigs a day each. Pero if you subscribe for yung suggestion mo na 1,000, unlimited, it's cheaper that way. Okay. okay. So, it's really now balancing actually the, uh, the features. Of the, of the different offers of our uh, telecoms. Okay. Thank you, po, Sir Fred. Uh, thank you, Sir uh, Zero. Question from uh, Angel Villaverde. How about for the students from far away? Do we still need to go to the campus? Will ADNU be going to provide us the authority to travel so that we can attend the face-to-face? Um, for, for the first month of the semester, based on the CHED advisory, we really have no recourse but to offer everything online. The earliest date that we can do face-to-face -face is, uh, will be on September 1. So, but even then, uh, going to the campus will be dependent on prevailing guidelines. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't think the, uh, the certification from the school that we are requiring students to come to the campus will work. Because when, uh, when uh, an LGU says that you cannot travel, that cannot be uh, circumvented by desires of the school to get students to go to campus. So that means that even if we are already conducted 
classes face to face in the campus, some students may really not be able to come. And therefore, online instruction for these students will, I think, continue, which is why we call it flexible learning. Clarado, it is a chat because we're really dependent on the situation. And it's really a situation on a locality by locality basis. For example, dito nga lang sa Naga City, naka-lockdown ng ibang barangay o ibang zones ng barangay. So even if people can travel to the, to the campus, our students who are based in those localities will, will not be able to leave their places. So that's really the situation of COVID-19. Thank you, Sir Fed. Okay, so I think that's the last question from the live comments. And uh, most of the questions from our previous Facebook related inquiries have been addressed already. So uh, maybe we can end the session here. So this has been a very enriching session. Uh, we are hoping that through this, we are able to help the students and parents understand better how the semester or the school year will be uh, will be with the flexible learning. If there are other questions uh, which you still want to ask after the session, you may send them through the official Facebook page of Ateneo de Naga. That's at Ateneo de Naga University. And also for feedback for this particular session. Uh, also... Uh, if if uh, you have questions regarding uh, enrollment, further questions regarding enrollment, you may uh, send them to us or the College of Admissions and Aid. Wait, uh, there's another pahabol na tanong. Last, this is, I think, the last question from Sir David. Uh, for some who don't have laptops at the moment, will the online lessons be smartphone friendly? for Sir Josh or Sir, Sir Zero. Last question. The question is for some who don't have laptops at the moment, will the online lessons be smartphone friendly? I think it will depend on the presentation uh, prepared ng mga faculty natin. No? Kasi you need to consider the screen size kung gaano ba kalaki yung presentation niya and then how would that uh, affect yung screen i mean viewing uh, screen ng ano natin end user at the same time yung usage of ano din uh, usage of videos and other uh, presentation so you need to check on that specific detail I would advise at the minimum better use like a tablet or an iPad mm -hmm. as a smartphone. Just to add, Miss Bernie. Yes, if the context of the question of Sir Dave is on the delivery of lesson through smartphones, I've tried that. Yes, so you can use smartphones to deliver your lesson. However, if your question is can you create lessons or materials from your smartphones? I think it's not advisable. So you have to use either a PC or a laptop to create teaching materials. But if the question is more on the delivery, then yes, uh, smartphones can actually uh, screen the, uh, I mean, share the screen, and you can also uh, use uh, other communication tools like Google Meet and Zoom to deliver your lessons. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, that's our last question. So again, uh, for our incoming freshman students, uh, the enrollment is ongoing while the enrollment for upperclassmen and transferees will start on July 3 and classes will start on August 3. So as we close the session, let me thank our administrators for providing us with the needed information for our students and their parents to understand the Ateneo Neo Normal. And for our viewers this afternoon, students and uh, Parents and also some of our faculty members, our heartfelt gratitude for listening to us and for your participation to this session. We hope that through this session, we were able to convey to you clearly how the semester and the school year will be and assure you of the quality of education 
We offer as we continue our 80 years of commitment for excellence in education. So on behalf of the university and the people that uh, are present today, this afternoon for this session, the, our, our administrators are fed, our deans and the representatives of our different offices. Thank you very much and good afternoon.